To set the stage for this story, we must go back to the far-off year of 1988. The location is the Cascade Mountains of Oregon. I was 10 years old, and with me was my mum, dad, best friend, and our golden retriever, Amber. We were very much an outdoor family and had many camping trips before this and since. But when I think about it, I still remember the terror I felt that weekend so long ago. After a brief talk with my father recently, it kind of came back to the front of my mind. He also was able to fill in a few details that I had forgotten. This holiday was like many others. We packed up the station wagon with everything we would need for a hike into one of our favourite lakes to camp at. To make this trip even more exciting for me was the fact it was my birthday weekend and I got to pick this lake. After we arrived at the trailhead and got our packs on, my dad got his sidearm out and strapped it on his belt. In Oregon, open carry was permitted in national forests and my dad always had a gun on his hip while in the woods. We had a close call with a bear one time in which it came in handy. The lake was about a four mile moderate hike in through some thick forest, but the trail itself was well maintained and was never busy. So it was going to be a very pleasant hike in. We started off on our hike and back in the eighties, It wasn't uncommon to have your dog off leash on the trails in the forest. So we let Amber run and do her thing. She was a good dog and never ran off for too long or jumped on people. She did love people though. And speaking of people, we had not seen anyone else on the trail after about two miles in on the hike, which was nice since it was just all of us talking, laughing and enjoying nature. My best friend and I started to hike ahead of everyone else because we were so energised and excited about finding the first and best tent spot once we got to the lake. Amber was bounding ahead of us and having a great time too. We were about 20 yards ahead of my parents when Amber stopped dead in her tracks. I thought she maybe saw a chipmunk or something, maybe a bird, but her hackles came up and she let out the lowest of growls. She never growls, so we stopped walking I thought a deer or something was just off the trail and she'd just seen or heard it. We immediately started walking backwards and my parents caught up to us. My dad asked us what was going on. I told him that Amber is up the trail and is growling at something. He told us girls to stay back with my mum and dad walked ahead to where Amber was on the trail. My dad gets up to her and looks around. I hear Amber whimper a bit while looking off the trail. My dad comforts her and calls her back and walks back to us and says to us it must have been an animal because he didn't see anything right off the trail or ahead of us. Dad tells us to let him take the lead and we continue to hike. It didn't take long before it was forgotten and Amber and the rest of us were all having a good time again. We arrived at the lake and much to my delight, there was no one else there camping. The water was clean and blue and the shade from the trees made the whole scene just perfect. My friend and I found the best spot to set up our tent and my parents followed suit. After we had camp set up, my folks went off to fish down the hill and my friend and I took off with Amber to walk around to the other side of the lake to catch salamanders. We only made it about one eighth of a mile when Amber stopped and started to growl. We stopped and looked around and we heard the brush rustling. Then right in front of us, a man walked out of the trees. Amber stayed right by our sides and started to bare her teeth. He was taller than my dad, so at least 6'4", was very skinny, but had really broad shoulders. He was clean cut and was wearing black jeans, a white polo shirt with loafers. I mean, he didn't look like he had hiked out here at all, or was even dressed for the outdoors. He almost looked like he'd come out of church. We just stood there, trying to process this situation when Amber began to bark. The guy just stood there, not moving, and he smiled. Like the creepiest smile. It it felt like someone who thought that this was what a smile was supposed to look like. Amber kept barking, and this got my parents' attention. They look up to us and called out to us to come back. We complied and started to walk back towards them. Dad met us halfway and told us not to go back up to the campsite and he was going to talk to this guy. We got back to our camp and my mum sat with us. I could hear my dad asking the guy if he needed help or was he a fellow camper who had just set up a camp away down the lake. 
My dad was being polite and calm, but I could see he was on guard and trying to feel out the situation. Now is the time to mention that my dad was ex-army and can be very intimidating when needed. The conversation continues. The guy told my dad he was just on a walk and did not mean to intrude on us. The guy said goodbye and walked back into the woods. My dad walked back to camp, sat down and told us that he thinks this guy may just be a yuppie camper and doesn't know much about the outdoors. My dad said he got a weird vibe off him and would be keeping an eye out for him. Amber stayed by our side and was calm, yet she kept looking towards the direction the guy went. A bit more time goes by and we have a nice campfire going and the sun was starting to set. We cooked some dinner and made s'mores afterwards. My friend and I decided to go to our tent and read some books and tell each other some scary stories. Amber followed us to the tent and laid right outside the door. My parents walked down to the lake to sit, have a beer and just chill. They were never more than 50 yards away. Not long after my parents walked away, I hear Amber start to growl. Then we hear footsteps coming from the woods behind our tent. My friend and I turn off our flashlight and go quiet to listen. The footsteps stopped at the edge of the woods. We then hear heavy breathing and a grunting sound. Amber starts to bark. Then we hear footsteps retreat to the woods. Amber whimpers a bit, and then I heard my parents walking back to the camp. I go out and tell them what had happened. Dad said that he heard Amber barking, which is why they came back up. I then asked my dad what we should do, what is going on, and if that strange guy was creeping around. He told me that we will see about moving camp in the morning, since we still have three days left on the trip, and nothing has happened to warrant just leaving. But he said that we will play it by ear and just be more vigilant. And if something changes, we will decide what to do next. He tells us to try and get some sleep and we all turn in for the night. It was a beautiful day and we were having so much fun. The events from the prior day were almost forgotten. We decided around lunchtime that we would go for a short hike to the waterfall. We were gone for only about an hour. And when we came back, we found our tents opened and our sleeping bags drug out onto the ground. My dad told us to hang back with mum while he went to investigate. He comes back to tell us that nothing was missing, but it was not an animal that did this. He said we should break camp, hike back to the car, and find another spot to camp for the next couple of days. I could tell my dad was not wanting to frighten us, but I heard the urgency in his voice. I was really disappointed, but if it meant we could enjoy the rest of the trip and not worry about some creep messing with us, then it was worth it. We broke camp and started our hike back. Dad was in the lead and we were double timing it and made it back to the car in record time. As we walked over to the car, we see that one of our tires was flat. Not a big deal, we always had a spare. But when my dad bent down to start taking the lugs off, he swore it was not just flat. Someone slashed the tire. Dad changed that tire in record time and we threw everything into the car. He goes to turn the car on, but it wouldn't start. Dad swears, gets out of the car, and then pops the hood. Shit. It turned out someone took our spark plug wires. Old cars like that Chevy wagon didn't have internal hood releases. You could just pop the hood from the outside. Dad slammed the hood, said some very colourful words, kicked some rocks. We were stuck, and no one else was at the trailhead. So we were stranded. My parents are calm under pressure, and after a few minutes of discussion, it was decided that Dad would start walking down the road until he could hitch a ride to go to town, to go to the auto parts store. Mum and the rest of us were going to wait with the car and look for someone to hopefully pull into the trailhead and help us. A few hours go by, and no one has come to the trailhead. It's getting hot, and we are hungry and tired. Mum made us some lunch and we go to sit under a tree to cool off. Amber was by our side and calm. But then we hear a voice. Amber leaps up and starts to whimper. The creepy guy from yesterday comes down the trail and he's asking my mum if we need help. My mum tells him we are fine, that it's being settled, that my dad will be back soon. This creep then tells her that his camp is close and he's parked on the old fire road that's near the lake. He asked us if we would like to come back to his camp 
and wait until my dad returns. Mum sternly tells him no, that we will just wait here and thank you anyway. He didn't like this. He then tells my mum that it's not safe out here for a pretty lady and two young girls. My mum, like my dad, is no pushover and asserts herself again that we do not need help and to please just leave us alone. The guy just stands there, smiles wide, and then turns around and leaves. My mum is visibly shaken and us girls were scared. Mum came over to us and told us that we need to stay close, do not wander, and that we will be okay. My friend and I are really kind of freaked out and hoping that my dad will be back soon. After about another 30 minutes, the creepy guy comes back. This time though, he is not alone. And he has a slightly younger guy with him. The other guy is dressed as a yuppie camper and had a very stern look on his face. My mum stands her ground as they approach. Amber starts to low growl and her hackles go up. The two guys flank us and one of them flashes a gun tucked into his belt. The older guy tells us that we need to go with them and that they were not asking. My mum backs up next to us and without taking her eyes off them, reaches to her belt and pulls out her bowie knife. My mum said we will not be going and that they need to leave now. The two men did not even flinch at this and said that we will come with them or they will hurt us. At this moment though, Amber goes from just growling to barking and puts herself between us and them. This makes the guys stop. My mum yells that they need to leave now. They start backing up. And at that moment, we hear a truck pulling into the trailhead parking lot. Just at the side of the truck, the guys start to walk away fast and disappear into the tree line. The truck was a forest ranger and he had my dad with him. My dad jumped out of the truck and ran over to us, asking if we were okay. The ranger came over and asked who those men were and if we were all right. My mum explained everything while my dad hugged us girls and told us that we will be okay. While the ranger takes off to go looking for the men. My dad tells us that he was about five miles from the town when the ranger picked him up and took him the rest of the way to get the part for the car. He then drove him back to our car. After hearing what happened, my dad was pissed. He wanted to find the guys who had tried to kidnap us and that had been terrorising us for the past 24 hours. The ranger came back, telling us that he had almost caught up to them, but they'd sped away in their truck with a camper in tow. They had been parked behind a small ridge behind the lake on an old logging road. He didn't get a plate, but he radioed a description of the men and their truck and camper to the local sheriff's office. He took our information and said he would pass it on to them. He waited with us until Dad had the car fixed and we were able to leave. We decided to not continue camping and instead drive a couple of hours to spend the last two days of the trip at the beach and stay in a hotel. A few days later, a deputy called my dad and told him they never did find the men. He said that it was most likely a crime of opportunity after seeing a woman with two girls in tow. He was sure they'd been watching us from off trail and had messed with our camp to judge how my dad would react. When my dad seemed to be too big of a threat, they sabotaged our camp, hoping to put us in a position where we were vulnerable. He said they would follow up with us if they find anything else. But according to my dad, nothing ever came of it. Years later, I tried to do some research on crimes in that area of Oregon during the 80s that might have involved something we experienced. All I could find was a few reports of campers being robbed and a few cars broken into. There was one case of a young lady and her dog going missing from an area near there, but it was never determined what had happened to her or even if it was something bad or if she just ran away. I can tell you that we did go back to that lake a few years later and had a very uneventful camping trip. It was nice to go back and find some joy in a spot that was special to me. I really hope those creepy guys never hurt anyone and maybe we'll caught for other crimes. I'll never know though. I just hope to never run into a situation like that again. I can say that having a dog along with us helped our situation. She was the hero and kept us alert. Amber went on to live until she was 12 years old and pass with her favorite people around her. Remember to stay safe, stay watchful, 
and it never hurts to have a sweet, brave dog with you.